You're listening to Sweep the League. Hey, this is George Iceman Gerber, and you're listening to Sweet the League Radio. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to Sweep the League, the Thursday throwdown edition of Sweep the League. Is commencing right now. We've got NFL Thursday night, Cowboys and Giants right now in the third quarter, 939 left. As of this podcast, Cowboys are up 14 to 9 over those New York football giants. Just an FYI, I can kind of prove. I um uh, I posted in our sweep the league group chat that I've got uh the Giants winning 24 to 20. I did say I was going to keep it. They were going to keep it close right now. Pretty damn close. 14 to nine. Uh, Giants are within striking distance. So we'll see how that game goes as we uh, go on throughout the night. I'm going to be joined by Hall of Famer Derek Gervin and also Coach Gio. They're going to be on here in just a little bit, having a little bit of technical difficulties with both of them uh, as far as computer issues go. So they'll be on with me in just a little bit. Hope everybody's doing fine. Shout out to MCS General Contracting. Shout out to uh, La Cocina Taco Truck, Castro and Sun Solar. Special ET. Also, shout out to Jeff Garcia over at Locked On Spurs. I was on today's episode talking about Devin Vassell. Be sure to check that out. It's myself and Jeff Garcia. We're going to be talking about that tonight. Also, we're going to get into some NFL talk, NCAA football talk. Uh, we'll get Geo's thoughts on the Georgia Alabama game coming up this weekend. It's going to be a huge, huge game. Also, NIL. We talked about that last night, myself and Derek. Uh, or yesterday, I'm sorry, yesterday's show that was previewed again or rebroadcast last night. I'm going to dive more into it because we have another player. USC's Bear Alexander was unhappy with his playing time, so he decides to redshirt. <laughs> I got a problem with the redshirt now. If you're going to start paying players and all this other stuff, we got to get back into that. Um, we just got a lot to get into tonight. So we're going to start here with the NIL deal that's going on, the whole issue with uh, Sluka from UNLV. Let's get in some college football talk till Derek and Gio get into uh, get into the show with us here. But again, we're going to talk some NIL. This first segment is going to be brought to you uh, by MCS General Contracting, the absolute best in the business, whether it's driveways, whether it's swimming pools, it doesn't matter what it is. Contact Chris Leha and the boys, MCS General Contracting, proud sponsors of Sweep the League. College football talk, man. All right, as mentioned last night, you know, and even yesterday's show, uh, UNLV quarterback uh, Sluka uh, was basically redshirted, said he was promised 100 k to play for UNLV. He only got paid $3,000. UNLV and we'll call it the friends of the family, or I'm sorry, friends of the program type stuff, um, basically said they didn't have a contract. They didn't have anything to prove that he was guaranteed a hundred thousand dollars and they just don't know where it came from. So we talked last night, Derek and I about this and we had more, another player come out today. Who's going to go ahead and red shirt before we go on a little bit more. Let me bring in the hall of famer. He is on with us right now. Um, that is Derek Gervin here. We're going to get coach Gio here in just a minute, but let's bring him on. Hey Derek, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine, sir. How about you? I'm doing good, doing good. It's a great uh, football Thursday. You can, you can vouch for me, right? I did take the Giants tonight, twenty-four to twenty. Yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah you did. <laughs> and, and right, they looking I, good. I guess they maybe they gonna get another field goal. May I hope it's a touchdown at least. Louis uh, Luna's in here from uh, La Cocina Taco Truck. Bear down. Uh, we'll get into some more of the. Uh, we'll get into some more of the NFL talk here. Uh, let's bring in the coach himself if he's ready, Coach Gio as well. We all got everybody. Now we got a full crowd here. Wearing a Hoosier shirt. What, what, a sweater. He's what, back. He's what? back. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Hey, Hoosier hey, Nation. Big game this week. Hey, Gio. I'm liking the way that cruise ship was looking, my man. I saw that room. I'm going to have to give you some love, my man. <laughs> it was a great time. I told Rudy, uh, I think a few days ago, I was – it's the first time I've ever been burnt, Derek. That Caribbean heat ain't no joke. It's no joke, dude. Well, as long as you have fun, man, it looked like you were enjoying yourself. And I, I joke a lot, but on that, I'm sincere. It looked like you was having fun, man. I'm glad. 
<laughs> it was a great time. Appreciate it, y'all. Yeah, well, welcome back. First off, you were you were badly missed by everybody, um, you know, including Derek and I. So you were badly, badly missed. Uh, well, hopefully, we. I'm pretty sure everybody wanted to talk about the Bears and Caleb Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and, Is that why uh, you avoided us? Because we were going to give you no. crap about Caleb Williams. No, no. I mean, listen, we we all can agree Caleb is not playing good at all right now. It, there are a lot of different factors to why, but so far, not looking good for Caleb Williams. You, Gio, you got a pass because we, uh, Trey, Trevor Lawrence and these guys have been so bad, we couldn't even focus <laughs> on Caleb Williams. <laughs> yeah. You know, I got to get Gio's take on what I told you yesterday on the show about that trade. We'll get to that later. Uh, on that trade talk, but I wanted, we're going to talk some college football first here. Um, the NIL deals and, you know, the red shirts, I'm going to bring up what we talked about yesterday, get Geo's takes on it, see how much more we feel affected by all this NIL talk. But before we get into NIL talk and all the red shirting going on, ever since I dethroned Daniel Jones as being the best quarterback in the draft class with Kyler Murray. This guy has been pretty damn good, Gio. I mean, tonight he's 19 of 22, 217 yards. They just got another t- uh, field goal. And I just Derek, told you they was on the four-yard line. I, I, I told you they got another field goal. Derek, we can't control the play calling. We can't control the play don't, calling. Don't throw Brian Dibble <laughs> on the bus. <laughs> well, he hasn't thrown a pick since I ripped his ass. So, well, that's a benefit right there. That's bonus. Well, I can only imagine. Bro. <laughs> hey, Gio, how can he throw a pick when his guys are so busy fumbling the, the ball around like bloopers? He's playing well right now. He's <laughs> he's he's playing well, but you got to get the ball in the red zone, Rudy. Um, well, and they right get now, the ball in the red zone. They just can't get it in the end zone. They can't that's get the it problem. in the end zone. Hey, Rudy. Before Yo. we go to um, the college, Gio, I got to give you some credit. Uh, we talked about you the other day as far as the Jacksonville, I mean, as far as uh, the, the Ravens. And I know you and Rudy both didn't think very highly of them. And then you also talked about the Cowboys possibly not even making the playoffs. And if you remember, I laughed. <laughs> Well, I'm not yeah, laughing man. anymore, man. So I got to give you some credit. My man. The Cowboys, I, I don't think I was here for that Saints talk. And then obviously the Ravens, kudos to the Ravens. They ran the ball a lot. They came in there with a game plan. And by God, did they do that? They ran, I don't know how many rushes they had, but they just literally ran through them. No point intended. Wasn't it 270 yards? 273 they yards. Did. Dallas is playing much better, though. Uh, the Giants are not a, a great particularly great rushing team. No Saquon, obviously. So uh, the receivers are catching a lot of balls, but they're not necessarily going in the, as Rudy says, the touchdown. So if, in the if, end if, zone, if the yeah. Cowboys lose tonight, is this it for Mike Zimmer? Uh, it's, it's it for one of the Mikes. That's for damn sure. <laughs> <laughs> Mike looks lost on the sidelines. I, it's, I don't know. You know, it's funny because you said the Cowboys are looking, you know, better tonight. Good. It's the Giants, man. They're not looking good against the Giants. That's that's that, true. You know, last year, uh, what what was the score of that first game? We're like forty to zero. Like, like that first game earlier in the year. First game earlier in the year. Yeah. And then they had <laughs> the old Danny DeVito or whatever his name was at quarterback. Uh, Tommy DeVito. It was yeah, Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito, Danny DeVito. They're all the same. They're uh, all the Vitos. Do you know the Giants? I, I will say that they look better, Rudy. They're they're playing better football. Does that mean they're going to make the playoffs? I don't know. But as of right no. now, they're a much. I think they're a much improved team, and they've been trying to feature Malik Neighbors, and he's yeah. been much as advertised, Rudy. Well, you can't feature Malik Neighbors without a quarterback that can get him the ball. So give some love to that oh, guy. Oh no, right listen, there. I'm I'm saying Matt Jones actually looks. Did like you say Matt sport? Jones? Are we going really? You're going to mess up the guy's Matt name Jones, that bad? You know, J- Jason Jones. I, listen, <laughs> Jason he, he Jones. looks good. <laughs> I, I'm not going to lie. He, he looks. But really, in three weeks, he could throw four interceptions, and we're back right where we started. Well, for now, we're gonna we're gonna praise him right now. We all all hell Mac uh, Mac Jones. See Daniel Jones. You got me talking different. Hey, names speaking now. of Mac Jones, oh, I <laughs> really, I you know, we I don't. To talk about what happened that day uh, on Saturday, but your coach is he still employed? I have no idea. 
I because there was so. a report. Well, you know what? That he's, said he left. He's he's staying till the end of the year. Put it that way. And you're talking about Mac Brown. Mac it Brown. Was, it was so weird. He had this cryptic talking about we're a power five school. We shouldn't be or power four. We shouldn't be losing. That's the mentality that, that got you that loss in the first place. And kudos mm-hmm. to James Madison, Rudy, because uh, what they did. And Derek, I'm sure you saw the score was an absolute <laughs> clinic. And not to boast or anything, but Indiana's head coach, Kurt Segnetti, was Segnetti, at James Madison know. last season. And they were a really good football team. So he left that team with some pretty good talent. That's all I'm going to say on that. North Carolina made it at least interest. They made it respectable, I'll say, the final score. 70 to 50. I mean, they were getting the brakes beat off of them. They did at least cut it to 70 to 50. I give them that, Derek. As we move on to the next subject, because we don't want to talk about North Carolina and James Madison, we're, we're, we can't talk about old news like that. That's terrible. Even though, even though it was predicted, because when I saw the James Madison was on the schedule, I figured, oh my, my elementary school, James Madison Elementary, over on St. Cloud in uh, Bandera. I was like, oh okay, yeah, that's a loss. <laughs> that's a loss right there. Now, I mean, getting into some NIL. So, Geo, Derek, and I talked yesterday. Yeah, obviously, Sluka from UNLV said, "Laters, I'm going to redshirt. Um, <laughs> promised all this money. I'm not getting my money. Yada 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 yada." Well, come to find out, Bear Alexander, you know, defensive tackle for USC, decides yes. to redshirt. Has nothing to do with money, as far as we know. It's playing time. He's not satisfied with his playing time. So, the Sluka thing. Derek and I were talking. It's going to have to come down to contracts. So you're going to start to see colleges get GMs, general managers in college, because they're going to have to work with all these NIL deals. But what I told Derek was you have to get rid of the red shirt year, like period. There's, there's got to be a middle point. If you're not happy, you're going to just red shirt and screw your team over. This and you know, or you know what? Just I can go anywhere. You already can transfer anywhere, but I'm a big believer now because of NIL. They've got to eliminate the red shirt. Period. It it cr- it puts a lot of schools on a on a crutch. So I, I think the red shirt has to be gone. That's a tough spot, Rudy, because I I looked up on that situation and look. Is it an in ink, Rudy, that he was supposed to get? What was it, a hundred grand? No, I don't it know. Was not. If, was it promise? It was, was verbal, it? verbal. So if it did, if it was verbal, that's a tough stretch there because obviously, if you go to court, Rudy, you, they don't care about a verbal agreement, right? So mm-hmm. he did what he, I guess, needed to do. The red shirt is there, Rudy, and you can do it, which I find odd after four games. Uh, well, but you, it, you can't play three. It's three is the me- the minimum. Okay, yeah, yeah, I mean, the three. Max. So, so I, I guess he's he's up to that point. So he just decides to leave. Yeah. This is where we're going towards. This is an unprecedented waters. Things are happening that we've never seen before in college football. And I think also for coaches, they're seeing things as well they've never seen. So this is new to all of us, right? I mean, we don't see things like this. The days of Nick Saban and top recruiting classes and people staying two to three years. I mean, Bear Alexander, Rudy, I'm not sure if you're aware, but he started off at Georgia. He was part of that national championship team, I believe, against TCU. And he was a freshman who started, played very well. And the next thing you know, he goes to USC, which I think was because of money, I assume. And then now he pulls this thing, um, which... Listen, he should be a he. He should really be a really good player. He has a size. He's a big boy. Should have the size, but if he's not getting playing time, uh, I, he, maybe he doesn't have anyone to blame. He, he's but playing, Gio. He's playing. He's just not. He does. He thinks he should be playing more. Um, Lincoln Riley commented on it. The guy is playing. He just thinks he deserves more time. Maybe because he left TCU and he thinks because he goes out to USC, they're going to do favors for him. Uh, but he he is playing. I mean, if, if but usually if you want more playing time, you have to do a little better, work a little harder in practice, don't you? Yeah, you do. And from what I saw, USC was getting not very good up front. And I did call it, Rudy. I said USC with the upset. I mean, uh, Michigan with the upset last week, Derek. Well, so I was looking out for you, Derek. 
I picked the I Wolverines. Like, well, yeah. well, I don't like USC either, Gio. I've been think they are over. They're one of those overrated teams. We talked mm. earlier in the year. I'm not. I'm not sold on Lincoln Riley. I never have been. Well, his defense, you know, his defense has been pretty poorly. I thought they listen. He has to give up a lot of runs, but I thought they played well, Rudy, on defense to a certain extent. Obviously, those two big runs really kind of spread mm-hmm. the game over. But I, I thought USC took the punches. They handled it okay. They obviously lost. But I don't think it's going to be the last time we hear from USC. I think we may hear them down the line. Uh, but, yeah, it, it's uh, it's different waters right now for NIL. It's it's really different. And, you know, the one thing I'm going to re-mention to, you know, to you guys is the fact that now that you're seeing red shirt guys, you know, basically, guys, I'm going to take a red shirt year. I'm, I'm going to say, screw this. I'm, you know... <laughs> No hard feelings or whatever. I'm gone. This NIL thing is going to turn into contracts, written contracts. You're going to have to sign it. And what I was mentioning yesterday was the fact of, okay, you have a written contract. You know, these schools are going to be like, you've got to be with us at least three years, at least three years. You're not going to be able to go pro, you know, or you can get penalized or this and that. So it's so murky, the waters that now for the second straight day, we're seeing another guy. You know, pull the red shirt flag. I'm going to red shirt this season. I'll see what happens at the end of the year. I'm probably going to transfer to another school, you know, and it's it's just not a good look, Derek. And it's something that you've commented and you've posted a couple of times that sports these days is not, you know, it, it's about what I can do for myself. I'm looking out for myself. And it's it's going, it starts in the pros. We're seeing it all the way down to the high school levels, man. It's so bad right now. You have one week where you feel the coach is not treating you justly like you think you should be treated. So you transfer or you you sit out. So they're going to have to come up with something. And contracts will probably be the, the uh, answer. But some of these guys, I mean, will they do that? Because it's like then you do that again. It's kind of like we're going a little ba- going backwards. Yeah, uh, they, you know there are some good parts of the NIL. There's some good things, but yeah, it has been uh, right now. You're seeing a lot of uh, players. That's me, 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 and it's not about the team anymore. It seems like we're getting away from what the game was intended to be. That you play for the team instead of playing for yourself. So yeah, they're gonna have to come up with something, and they're gonna have to do it quickly because after uh, Sluka and then this young man from USC, you know. You know how it goes. You see one or two guys doing it, and then someone's going to be doing it again this coming week. That's the problem there. Is is, is monkey see, monkey do. I mean, someone's going to be doing it, and then down the line, and every year, we find a, a, a another strange story. Um, but look, if they promised him 100K, uh, it's a different time. They're 3-0, and all, right, Rudy? I think they're off to their best start yeah. in a long time. They beat Kansas. Yeah. Uh Whatever you think of Kansas right now, they were th- uh, a ranked team at the time. Yeah, they and were. they went on the road and beat them, I believe. So the team was kind of coming of age, and it's a bit unfortunate. Um, but Tim. <laughs> yeah, Tim wants to know if next month, Sweep the League should have a Derek Gerben Hall of Fame holiday, which means no show on a Friday to celebrate Detroit and you would hear say great Derek Gerben. Yeah. Yeah. We- yeah. We, we'll have a holiday show for I want to do the show on Friday, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting antsy, man. So every time I can do the show, it kind of takes makes my nerves a little better, eases my nerves. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely do something because the Hall of Fame ceremony is coming up here on October uh, 18th, 19th. Well, actually, the 19th is the Hall of, the Hall of Fame dinner, I believe. So uh, be sure to go out to the UTSA game that day. Some special, uh, special treatments for the Hall of Famers is going to be out there. Uh, but it's Hall of Fame weekend starting the 18th of October for Derek Garvin celebrating his Hall of Fame entrance into hey, 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 Hall of Fame. I yes, got sir. some more good news, but I have to save that for a little while. <laughs> okay. No worries. We, we will save that. We will but save some that. More good news that I'm happy about. <laughs> we'll we'll let you do, we'll let you make that announcement uh whenever you're allowed to. We'll let you make that announcement. So uh, Tim is in here. Pizza night at Native Grill. So yeah, I've never been to Native Grill. I need to try that. I've Tim's been before. there for a few hours now because I saw the earlier that he went with his family. <laughs> so they they hanging out, man. It must be some pretty good food over there, Tim. 
So I've heard. I've heard they've got some really good food out there. I've got to try that here. Uh, get into some quick uh, college football. Before we take our first commercial break, let's get into some quick college football this weekend. Obviously, tomorrow you've got Miami, Virginia Tech. Um, the first big game that comes up is number 20, Oklahoma State, 23, Kansas State. Uh, you know, that's probably going to – I, I kind of go more lean towards Oklahoma State in that game right there. Uh, you've got Louisville 15, Notre Dame 16. you got a lot of great games this weekend. Uh, number 19, Illinois against Penn State. I think Penn State's on upset watch right there. I like Illinois going into there. I'm just running through a few of these games here. I'll get you guys' takes on a couple of these games here. Utah, Arizona, that's a game that, again, you're looking at. Arizona had a lot coming in uh, to the Big the Big 12, so that could be a game where Utah maybe fumbles. I don't think they do, uh, but that's definitely a game that they might be able to fumble. And, of course, you've got the game of games, Georgia against Alabama. Woo! Oh, man. Go dogs, baby. It's going to be a fantastic weekend. Ohio State going to Michigan State. Now, I've clearly said Ohio State is the fraud in the top five. This is where it starts. Their season starts this weekend as they go into East Lansing and play those Michigan State Spartans. So we'll see how good Ohio State is this weekend. Uh, run around. We're going around the rim here. The, well, the horn. Whoever wants to start first, be my guest. What game are you looking forward to? Not yeah. Georgia, Alabama, please, because we're going to talk about that one. But if you got another game to talk about first, give me that one first. We're going to get the Georgia Bama. Yeah, yeah. For me, for me, it's Utah, uh, Arizona, because you know I had high hopes for uh, Arizona. I still think they're a pretty good team. Uh, I don't think they're as good as last year. But I think very highly of uh, Utah. And if you remember when we were picking off, making our picks, uh, I, I like uh, Miami and I also like Utah. And this is the game for me that uh, is going to prove. If I think if Utah wins this game and they win convincingly, I, I don't see them losing. I told you I could see them maximum losing one game. Yeah. So that one game, this is the one I'm kind of nervous about uh, going against Arizona. But for me, that's the game. And, and I think Utah is going to win that game convincingly. Well, I live in Big Ten country. Interested to watch the Illinois Penn State Rudy. We've talked about Penn State Rudy as well as Derek. Every now and then they just they lose to somebody they're not supposed to lose, right? And yeah. Illinois, big win last week. Rudy actually caught some of that game against Nebraska. I believe it went to overtime. Two Big yeah. Ten foes. It, it, it's going to be a battle of wills. I give Illinois a good shot to go in there and win. It's going to be a tough environment. But uh, Brett Bielema's got this program back in Illinois and Penn State. I don't know, Rudy. I just I, – they might make the playoffs just because of their schedule. <laughs> their but schedule I just, is so bad. F- f- go look at Franklin's uh, record, Rudy, against winning teams. It's, it's really bad. Yeah, I, I know it's really bad. I did look it up uh, earlier. So, And, that, again, that Illinois game – I'm good. I'm circling Illinois, man. They, they've Illinois been playing pretty good, didn't they, Rudy? Oh, God. Yeah, they they've been looking. I thought so they looked pretty good, good all year. Yeah. You know, they're they're not looking Indiana Hoosier good or as good as Geo in that Hoosier sweater. Hey, I'm <laughs> I'm making the trip <laughs> to Bloomington to watch uh, Indiana versus Maryland uh, this week. So it's gonna be a packed crowd. Hey. We are expecting rain, so. You know how those rain games go, Rudy. Anything's possible. So oh, yeah. we'll see how see, that yo. offense could potentially slow down. Yeah, go ahead, Derek. Who's better, uh, Indiana right now? Indiana or or uh, would you say, are they even in the same ballpark with Tennessee? Well, look, Tennessee plays in the SEC. I think they're far ahead right now, Derek, simply because of that defensive line at Tennessee is it's going to be a problem. I think the quarterback, though, Rudy, it's a freshman quarterback. Yeah. Warwick's really good at Indiana. He's thrown no interceptions. He's been phenomenal all year. So I think the quarterback, I think the team overall is is got to be Tennessee, Derek, just because of the athletes they have and that defensive line and the receivers running backs. But Indiana, I mean, they're playing on a high level, big game against Maryland, and then they go on the road, tricky game next week at Northwestern, so we'll see what this yeah. team looks like in a few weeks, but man, that Michigan game, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make that game just for you, Derek, <laughs> but I might not be able to make it, but I'm going to try my hardest. I, I'm nervous already. <laughs> I, I like Indiana. I, I think uh, when you talked about them at the beginning, 
I didn't really take you serious, but after looking <laughs> at them over a few, no, really, I didn't. But after looking at them over a few weeks, um, I think they're a better team than they're being given credit for. And, and I think they're going to continue to surprise people over the course of the year. They, I don't think they're a bad team at all. Yeah, no, no, I mean, this is a I big so. a, a big hire for them. Kurt Segnetti, wherever he's been, Wherever program he's in, he's won. Sure, they've been at small schools, but look what James Madison just did last week to North Carolina. That's just a sw- Stop it. I'm sorry to keep bringing him up, Rudy, but he was there last year, and unfortunately, you you gave up 70 points in a football game. But anyway, uh, Chris Signetti, big shout out to them, but they are on upset. Maryland is a sneaky team. Mike Loxie always has those teams ready to go. It's going to be a physical brand, and I uh, can't wait for Saturday. Any opportunity, any chance, and now before we move on to more to some more college talk, <laughs> hey, any, uh, give North Carolina some credit though. They held James Madison uh, what to seventeen under a hundred. They held him under a hundred. I'll give him this is second half 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 seventeen. <laughs> this is unbecoming of you. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, blame the school, blame Mac Brown, blame everybody else but me. What's the I really record? Do you guys know what's the record for for the, for one half? Oh God, I don't they know. Were getting close. I was starting to have to look it up when they started talking about. I know 50. there was a game back in the day. Didn't somebody score like over hundred points, Rudy? And like a half. Old, Not I don't a know, half. Like one of those old games, like back in the twenties. I, I don't know. I mean, more than likely, I don't know. I, I can do the research for everybody out there in a minute, but you know, before we move on to the big game, obviously Georgia Bama. Uh, I just want to throw this question out there because. As much as Gio's talked about Indiana and Derek and I, you know, we we thought we laughed about Indiana being good. We just figured that, you know, Indiana was here and the rest of the Big Ten was here. Not the rest of them, but the power teams in the Big Ten uh, were a little fur- further and superior than Indiana. But <laughs> can we really say that with the way Indiana's been playing, can they legitimately be the second, if not the best team in the Big Ten? And I, I again, we haven't seen Ohio State be tested yet. We've seen Michigan already, you know, lay the egg against Texas, who's number one team, but we still haven't seen a really dominant Michigan team. Penn State, we really don't even know about Penn State. We won't know about them until this weekend. <laughs> you know about Penn State. They're, that's Notre Dame. <laughs> that's Notre Dame's brother or sister. So. <laughs> He's heard it here first. Any given week, we know what can I think happen. it's too early to tell. I, I, listen, Ohio State, they're athletes. The D, I, Rudy, I think right now, I love Indiana. Third? I'm going to that game. They're probably, probably fourth on that fourth. list. Simply because they got so many new players. They haven't really hit adversity yet either. I, I, you know, the first games are always kind of weird. They didn't play great off the bat against FIU. Uh, but yeah. Curtis Rourke's been phenomenal. But I, I just think it's too early. And, and I go on Twitter, I see all this Indiana stuff. Say, man, just just give us more time, man. I, I don't want to have the wagon here first where we haven't even, you know, put on the food in there. Right? So let's you. just... R- Bring just a little bit down. I don't want people to go crazy, but obviously I've been hyping them up. I just want to – they got some tough games, and we're going to learn a lot because now, Rudy, it's conference play, right? So yeah. this is where we learn. We're going to learn if, if Penn State's for real, Derek. Which the, yeah, well, I'm most likely they are. Are. <laughs> Penn State <laughs> being in there, and we're going to see Georgia and Alabama, which is going to be a phenomenal game. Um, so – why you guys? Why neither one of you guys mentioned Oregon? Oh yeah, no, you know I forgot about that. <laughs> they played good last week already. They did. They finally they, looked good last week. They took care of their uh, sister or whatever stepbrother, whatever you want to call that rivalry um, there in Oregon State. Though so, you know what? It was the first time they won there in a while. So apparently mm-hmm. it was actually a pretty tough team. But no, I I think. Um, Oregon's right there. They got the speed. Something's off, though. I don't know. They didn't look great the first few games. <laughs> they barely beat uh, Idaho or somebody, they were, right? Hey, they were yeah. my pick to win the Big Ten, though. And I still think they're going to win. I don't believe in Ohio State. But, no, I, will, I don't have Oregon winning the Big Ten. You don't, really? No. I, I, even though I call them a fraud, I still have Ohio State won. I mean... It, 
even though you said they're trending upward, Oregon? Oregon's trending upward, but I don't think they win the Big Ten. I don't think so. I they they looked good in one week. And that's really all I can say. Now, against UCLA, I'm fully expecting them to look good again against UCLA. But I don't when it comes to, you know, the bigger teams in the Big Ten, I just can't see Oregon beating an Ohio State or anybody like that. I, I just I don't have them winning well, the Big Ten at all. Yeah, it, it's it's gonna be tough for them because we saw what happened in USC, right? You get yeah. to those games and Rudy, it's 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 gonna be raining. It's gonna be raining on Saturday here, right? Especially Big Ten. It's it's gonna be great weather. And I'm not saying that obviously in Oregon it does rain, right? They live in the Pacific Northwest, but and it's a different brand. And you saw USC struggle. Right? It's just round and pound. You're gonna have those teams who also air it out um, as well. But yeah, Oregon, may, maybe not yet, but they're still up there. They have the talent. They got the speed. They yeah. got athletes all over the place. And man, they got some cool jerseys too. Yeah, they do. You know, Tim's just posted a weekend special over at the dress, Rudy. What's that? Send that address so Tim yeah. can FedEx these wings and this 14-inch pizza. You know, I, I think he's challenging me back when I was a big fat Rudy because I could I could definitely eat 20, that meal. That ain't a problem. Bucks, 15 yeah. pieces of hot wings and a 14-inch pizza. That that is not a problem back in the day. I could I could easily that's like a lunch for me probably right there <laughs> from back in the day. So uh yeah, I, I can get the address for you in a little bit. But you know, the one game before we move on to Georgia Bama, the one game I have circled, um, I actually have Boise State losing this weekend to Washington so State. I, so do I. Yeah, I, I think this is that game where we see Boise. Aren't, uh, they, aren't they underdogs by seven points, something like that? Uh, Boise's Boise. favored by seven. And They're favored by seven? Yeah, Boise's favored by seven and I a half. I have Boise losing that game. Yeah, I don't like that game for Boise. I, I've actually got you know Washington uh, State winning that game. Uh, well, so it, it's going to be the battle of, of obviously running game versus a passing game. Yeah. And obviously they got the stud there running back in um, is Ashton Genty. I mean, Rudy, yeah. he's he's good, Rudy. Uh, he's phenomenal. And they're going to feature him. It's, it, it's going to be a battle of two different offenses and defenses. Who's going to step up? I might give the edge to to Boise here. but Haven't they beaten uh, Boise like five out of the last six games or something, Rudy? Nah, it's some crazy number I think like they that. They beat them like, but I know that has nothing to do with this coming weekend. But I think they've beaten uh, Boise. I, yeah, I like Boise. I like the color they feel better than I like the team this year. So <laughs> I, I'm picking them to go down. Yeah. Washington State can sling it. Uh, they yeah. are going to put up points, and obviously they're going to have to to control the clock. Um, so, Rudy. Hey. Uh, Gio, I'm sorry. Did you watch the, did you watch the um, or who did Oklahoma State play this past week? You remember, Rudy? Let me see, because because I expected it they to played be played Utah. Uh, yeah, because I expected it yeah. to be a high scoring Gordon. game. Man, Ali yeah. Gordon, you know they're running back Gordon. He didn't. Sh- the team just didn't play well. And Utah, for whatever reason, it doesn't matter what quarterbacks back there, whether it's the 10 year senior or it's uh the brother, actually, Rudy, of uh, former Jets quarterback. What's his uh, name again? Uh, Wilson. I know. I know. Uh, Zach Wilson. Zach yeah, Wilson's that, brother. Yeah, that, that's actually Zach Wilson's brother, which is not ironic because Zach went to BYU and his brother's at Utah. But it doesn't matter what quarterback Utah puts back there. They're going to play well. And they took care of business. I'm surprised Oregon State just did not. I mean, uh, Oklahoma State didn't look good. No, they did not, man. Um, you know, we're going to go on to the, uh, well, the big game, man, Georgia hey, Bama. Yeah, they haven't looked good since Gundy was 40. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go to Georgia and Bama. So, you know, I, I remember I said, you know, actually I said this past week uh, and talking to a friend of mine, I said, you know, actually it was my boss actually talking about it. I said, yeah, this is the big game of the week. You know, you got Georgia, you got Bama. He asked me who I'm taking, and I said reluctantly, I, I'm leaning towards Bama right now, but that could change very well. And why can it change? Because weather is going to play a factor. I mean, you've got the hurricane coming in. I know they're going to get some rain down there. I don't know how it's going to affect it, but looking at it on paper, I, 
I kind of like Bama just right now. My gut tells me Bama. It could change over the weekend and before the game gets here. But I just go back to that Kentucky game, Gio. I, I mean, I know it was a battle for Georgia, and they had a week off. You know, they're coming into this week. It's just, I don't know, man. Is there something you can tell me to give me that slight edge to give to Georgia heading down to Tuscaloosa at Bryant-Denny Stadium? Because right now, I'm feeling Georgia's uh, win streak's going to snap against Bama. Hmm. Well, look, Georgia's won. I, I don't know what the record. How many SEC games have won in a row? I mean, conference games, right? It's like 40 yeah. something. It's yeah, it's like crazy. 43, isn't it? Something like that. Some crazy number. 2021 um, or 20, damn, lost something like 2021 or something crazy. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, it it's a phenomenal streak, and, look, it's a tough matchup. I mean, they're playing a team that I, I respect Alabama. they got a lot of athletes. The rain could play a factor. This could be – if the, if it does rain, Rudy, it could, could slightly favor Georgia and their style of play, at least this season – Jordan's going to want to run the ball with Brian Robinson and uh, ETN, the brother of uh, Travis ETN, the one from uh, the Jags. But, man, Georgia's getting some guys back this week. Listen, that Kentucky game, I know a lot of people laughed and said, ah, oh, it's just Kentucky. Kentucky has a very good defense, a lot of athletes, a lot of guys from the portal as well. And Kentucky also plays stuff. And, Rudy, that was – they got out of there just alive. I mean, just barely. I mean, people don't realize that Kentucky's been relevant for a few years. They may not have made a whole lot of noise, but for the past few years, Kentucky's been a tough out. They've been several, relevant in college for football. So, for several years, and it's one of those things where, sure, it's just a random SEC team, but we saw what South Carolina did to LSU. We saw what Arkansas just did to Auburn. Verdi Vanderbilt had Missouri on the ropes. And I know yeah. I've laughed about Vanderbilt a lot, but I want to give Vanderbilt a lot of credit. They've, they've played some tough teams. They beat Virginia Tech. They've had some close ones, and, and Missouri's a good team. Uh, but, man, I'm obviously I'm going to pick Georgia, but I'm going to say this. Georgia has to come out with an edge because what I saw against Kentucky was flat. It was essentially saying, hey, we're Georgia. We're going to just show up. And obviously, you got to give Kentucky a lot of credit too. But, geez, it it, it was not a good look. But <laughs> I'm going with the dogs, and it's going to be a hostile environment. It's going to be loud. It's going to be a lot of people drinking there, Derek. So, <laughs> it's it's going to be a tough environment. So you guys, so you you're saying your team's going to get out. You know they're going to have to score in the first half. They've scored three touchdowns in the first half, and up to two of those were against Tennessee Tech. So can can they shut down Jalen Mill? Can they shut Mill Rose down and produce offense? That's going to be the key. You know, the offensive play calling, I don't want to criticize uh, Mike Bobo, which I'm not a fan of. He was here during Mark Rick era, and it was not very good either. So I, I didn't love some of the play calling. Get the ball down the field. You, you have these receivers and you have these athletes. Get the ball down the field. Attack. Don't be scared. And I feel a lot of hesitation against Kentucky, but obviously Kentucky was playing good defense. Uh, but Georgia, I believe they can, Derek. Uh, but if, if if you only score, was it for the Georgia score thirteen points, Rudy, or something like that? You're not 13. beating Alabama. Score. This isn't 2010. The, you're yeah. not beating Alabama like that. A- Alabama will eventually score. So uh, they they got to step up because this is a tough game, and you got Texas coming down real quick uh, in just a few weeks. So. Saban will be smiling on the sideline. <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> hey, that's a tough game. Um, man, hey, Rudy, you remember yeah. early in the year, you and I talked about we didn't like Georgia very much. Yeah. Um, and Gio, you know, I like so, and they still undefeated. But something tells me Alabama's going to end up running over them, man. I don't think it's going to be a 30-point loss, but I think Alabama's going to be physically stronger than them. Uh, I think they're going to be quicker at most of the important positions. Uh, I, I'm not in love with Alabama either, but I think they're going to make a statement against uh, Georgia, and I think it's time for Georgia to suffer their first uh, loss in quite a while. And I, I'm taking Alabama to win that game by at least 10 points. Yeah, and that's with me. I, I'm i so back and forth on the game that it's 
you know, I'm like, well, I'm right now I'm going towards Bama. I, I do like Bama right now. It could change probably tomorrow. Um, you know, it could I mean it could go either way for me because you got Bama, you got Georgia that still has to play Texas. They gotta go to Austin to play Texas. They still gotta go to Ole Miss. Uh they still gotta play Tennessee. They they've got a a very brutal schedule, Georgia. So that's why I had mentioned that you're probably <laughs> possibly can see a two-loss Georgia team. Are either of these teams going to finish with one loss or less? Because if you look at Alabama's schedule, Alabama really has to win this game. I think if they lose this game, they're in for a rude awakening the rest of the season. When you look at their schedule, and I watched uh, Paul Feinbaum and these guys kind of go over the schedule yesterday. And, and when he started showing the schedule, some of these teams at Georgia that Alabama's going to have to face, we're yeah. looking at it. They lose to Georgia. We're looking at Alabama possibly losing three, maybe even four games before the season's over. So this yeah. game is basically make a break, in my mind, more so for Alabama than it is for Georgia. I mean, you still got Bama going. They got to play LSU. They got to play Missouri and Tennessee. Oklahoma at the end of the year. They end the year in the Iron Bowl with Auburn. But you can't overlook a, a South Carolina team who we South Carolina who we can see play, play big They're, time ball in big the defensive games. Defensive front, they beat up Kentucky, and I, I thought Georgia would do the same, but they beat up Kentucky pretty badly. Uh, that was not even a, a fun game to watch. But hey, don't and don't forget about Vanderbilt, guys. Yeah, that, 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 that team took Mizzou to what two overtimes, Rudy? I believe something like yeah. that. So. Uh, you never know in these weird games in the SEC or even so, the Big Ten. Who do you two guys have now moving up to replace uh, Texas State and Memphis as a surprise <laughs> team? Dude. I mean, hey, Liberty would probably be the first option. Liberty, I honestly, if we're going into teams that you're going to probably put in that 12, 11, 12 range, um, BYU, maybe one Liberty. Pos- well, no, because Indi- Indiana, Indiana's one. I would say Indiana does get in. I, I think they will get in. Probably BYU. I think Boise State. Again, they probably lose this week, which kind of kills a lot of their chances uh, of getting in. Outside of that, Derek, man, Colorado. we're talking. <laughs> That that would be Rudy's worst nightmare if Colorado (laughs) got in. Hey, Um, speaking of Colorado, that was a big time play that Shador made, Derek. You got to give him up. That that, that was. (sighs) At the end of the game. That was a bit. He actually made a pass before that. The guy dropped. Yeah. But Shador, sure, yeah, for, for his trash talk and his dad, all that stuff, that was a big time play he made. Y'all got to admit. Well, I saw the same play with Doug Flutie. I'm not excited. Doug Flutie wasn't, you know, all in a He threw it where somewhere. nobody else could catch it. <laughs> and, and and to throw it on the run like that, um, that was a pressure-packed throw. And, I mean, he, he couldn't have put it in a better place. Well, see, I'm not going to dog the guy. I mean, I know how I feel about Shadur Sanders and coming into the NFL and all that. I'm not going to dog him. It was a great throw. I mean, it was a, a great throw. I throw that not many people can make, so I, I give him credit for that. And that Travis Hunter. There. No, he, Travis he, Hunter is the reason why Colorado is Colorado. I mean, that's just, that's it. The guy's playing both sides of the ball. He's making plays on both sides of the ball. Travis is just a – Rudy, he, he's special. And I, and I'm not even – he should – if someone picked him number one, would you fight him? Nope. Nope. As a number one pick overall? Yeah. Yeah, no. Do you want now? Here goes the thing. Do you want to deal with the attitude though, man? Because he kind of reminds me of CD Lamb, uh, one of those guys. If he doesn't get the ball <laughs> every well, play, I we saw does. CD last week, and we saw what he's doing today. He has like a well, ton of catches. A, it's the Giants, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> he said it. <laughs> what if you? I'm saying, is he worth the gamble? Because at some point, it's an NFL guy that uh, actually called him out uh, yesterday or the day before. And he wasn't anything negative. He was just saying that, CD, they're going to have to decide, is he going to play both sides of the ball? Or is he just, which position, what position, is he going to be offense or defense? 
In the NFL, can he play on both sides of the ball? No. There's no way no. he can play both sides of the ball. If, no, I, so I wouldn't put him through that. It legitimately comes down to who drafts them. Because if... Um, okay, l- I guess let's take it. let's take it here. If the New York Giants drafted Travis Hunter, honestly, I would put him on the defensive side of the ball. That's what I would do, probably that. And then you could run him on, you know. Yeah, I mean, you can run him on the offensive side here and there. That's not a problem. I'm not mad about that. But I, I, I would almost like to see Travis Hunter play cornerback in the NFL. Uh, that that's just me. Um, is there something about playing both sides of the ball, opposite positions, receiver, cornerback? I just feel like he could be a more dominant player on the defensive side of the ball. But he's still spotting, you know, use him in spots here and there for, you know, at wide receiver. So, yeah, that that, makes it just depends. But, I mean, if he goes to a team like Carolina, I mean, you need an offensive weapon there. <sighs> so, you know, there you go. You have J.C. Horn in Carolina. So, you're okay at a corner area, but he would be more beneficial on the offensive side of the ball if he went to Carolina. That, that's just my what well, about that fumble that. he called that caused that to go yeah. line to end the game? But Derek, those are the yeah. type of plays you want your stars to make. And he's been phenomenal. Listen, he went to a, a different type of school, right? Coming out of college, people were surprised. And he, he balled out there. Now he's he's balling out at Colorado. Um, I, I don't think Colorado makes the playoff. I, I, I mean, they would have to go no. on a hell of a run. They're not going to make um, the playoffs. But... A big game this week against UCF and Gus Malzahn. It's going to be interesting to see that. I think UCF's a better team overall, but who knows what happens because you got Shador, you got Travis. You, you you got a shot every game, Derek. Every time they put on those helmets, they got a shot. Um, uh, unless, obviously, they're playing any of the b- big-time schools like Texas. Don't you think their defense is still a little suspect? The, I know the defensive line played a little better. They played better last week, but He's getting still, better. Yeah, I look at all those guys over there, Warren Sapp over there smiling and all that stuff. Uh, I'm just <laughs> interested to see if he'll be smiling in a few weeks. It's, listen, Warren's great. I think he was obviously a Hall of Fame, but those kids don't have any of his his stuff. So you're out there teaching, and you hope they obviously – but they're they're playing better. And maybe as the season gets along, Derek – Maybe this team looks very different at the end of the season. I do think, though, they're going to make a bowl game. I know we were all kind of saying they – well, I I thought they would make a bowl game. I know Rudy said they would probably win three or four games. I didn't Um, say three or four. I said five. five You might have to check the tape on that, Derek. Check the tape on that. I did not say three games. He said five or six. I know he said something like that, though, Derek. I know he did. did Yes, he did. We're going to pull up the tape. He definitely Three said four. Oh my god! I, I swear, I know. Uh, Rudy, you might have said. I'm trying to think back if you said that one if time. I said that. It was big time jokingly that I said three or four. I uh, did not <laughs> expect three or four games. I said five. Hey, Gio, I believe you because I think one time we were talking <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I think I'm serious. I think you did say that one time, Rudy. You might only said it once, but. That kind of I heard it. does sound right. Maybe three or I four see, wins. Well, yeah. He said three or four wins. I'm pulling up the and schedule here so I can see. I I said, sure, yeah, and Rudy right. said that we're not going to beat Colorado State. I know he said that. Yeah, I did say that. I did say that. They wouldn't beat Colorado State. And they barely hey, beat Rudy, Baylor. so why are you looking it up? Be honest. Do you – Do you has Shadour – do you see his uh, stock rising? No. No, I've been seeing people not. talking about him second round or first round, and you you still think he's a fifth or sixth round guy? Um, yeah, I'll I'll be I'm lenient, and I'll say fifth round right now, fifth and sixth round. Is what, what do you I, think, Gio? I told you I told you sixth or seventh and undraftable last year. I think he, year. I think he's raised his stock, uh, especially right. with that. He was already. I think he's gotten a little better, man. He's a little more um, comfortable in the pocket. He's still he's not holding the ball as long as he was last season. Uh, his accuracy is looking pretty good. Um, I think some teams will take a gamble on him. 
No, you, he, ma- you have to, but it just a ma- it's a matter of where do you gamble on Shitter Sanders? What well, it, yeah, it matters Bryce, where you go. Yeah, Bryce yeah. Young is. I mean, man, look right now. Look right now. You got Deshaun Watson. Yeah, Bryce Young. I mean, you got guys like that. You got Sam Darnold leading, leading the Vikings to three and zero. So I think if you look at these, are not marquee players we're talking about. Deshaun Watson, all these guys. So I don't think uh, Shadur is any worse than so the way some of these guys are playing. And I think some coaches are willing to take a gamble on him. Uh, I won't say first round, but I can see him going right now, second or third round. He's number one on ESPN's big board for quarterbacks. Shadur Sanders, Carson Beck, and then Quinn Ewers are the top three quarterbacks for next year for the draft coming up here uh, in 2025. But I I don't – I mean, it it goes back to the Caleb Williams thing. I mean, I'm not calling Caleb Williams terrible. Now, so in all fairness and being truthful, 100% truthful, I felt Caleb Williams wasn't going to be worth the first round pick, first to first pick in the draft. And I, I still don't, but he's the type of quarterback who can come in. He can make plays. He can get your team down the field, but when he gets rattled, he gets rattled. And it's been shown a lot in the NFL. He's making bad throws. He's missing his receivers. When the defense collapse, when the, the, uh, the line collapses, the defense gets to him, it rattles him. He panics. So I get it. It's year one. I'll give Caleb another year, see how he does. But I don't think he was worth the first the first pick in the draft. I've seen more out of Jaden Daniels. Jayden Daniels. I've seen more out of Bo Nix. I mean, you well, see a lot more out of these guys. The more established guys, I think. You're still talking about I, Bo, huh? I'm not. Bo knows Bo. Wait, so <laughs> th- this is what I want to say about that. Uh uh, I've talked to some Bears fans. They're not very happy with Shane Waldron as the offensive coordinator. I saw Terrible that Colts. I anything. saw the Colts game, dude. Now I know why Seahawks fans wanted him gone. It was terrible. terrible. He had the ball in the red zone. By the way, several times in the red zone, he ran a <laughs> trick play in the red zone. It was just nice. whatever you think about Cliff as the OC with the Commanders. I know he can call plays, though. He can dial them up. He can scheme it. And Kyler had his best years with Cliff. And we already know about Sean Payton and what he can do with an offense. I, I First of all, Rudy, you already know how I feel about defensive head coaches because uh, whatever Danny his name Quinn. is, Eberflus, whatever, th- that's not going to work. You need what an about offense. Dan but, Rudy, he, but he paired himself with... Exactly. A really good offensive coordinator. Dan Quinn Shanahan. Dan Quinn Kingsbury. Dan Quinn knows what to do as a head coach. Go you ahead, You have to. And Shane Waldron just has not worked out. Seahawks fans apparently told Bears fans about it. And now Bears fans are crying about it. And what do you do now? You, you have to fix it. But it's something's off. There's too much talent, Derek. There's too many guys on this offense that, well, you can't get, you can't get nobody the ball. It's, be, before before Derek says anything, I want to say this on that Colts game. I spit out the water that I was drinking when I saw what was it on the goal line fourth and one, and they run a pitch pa- pitch play to DeAndre Swift. I'm, you pitch it back two or three yards to DeAndre Swift. I'm like. You never on goal, fourth and one. Rudy, you funny because I'm sitting here looking at the game with my woman. And when (laughs) (laughs) I'm over there saying, quarterback sneak, quarterback sneak. Or you just pounded straight to the Or I actually said, tush push. Yes. And when they handed the ball, (laughs) I was like, oh, "Oh, boy, we know what's going to happen after that. Hey, Gio, but for Caleb, is it really the plays or. Is it a combination of both? Because Caleb has had some opportunities where he's overthrown guys by like 15 yards. He's he's also not playing very well. Um, he's being rattled easily, and he's just he's not making certain throws that he should be making. It's a combination of both, Derek. He's not playing well, and the offensive play calls. I thought that Texas game, Rudy, I, I thought he was getting things going. Yeah. And then, but they can't run the ball, and Caleb is. He seems like he's like your leading rusher, it seems like, these days. And that's not going to work. It's a disaster. 
And I love Swift. He's a former dog. But, man, he is looking not good so far. This not, not, not a good pickup so far. I don't know where they go from here, but you better figure it out because, Rudy, if they don't – I could see the coach get fired easily. He, he, yeah. And he's on his last legs. Not, so, making, it, not making it through the year? If they keep yeah. it up, no. There's just no way. They're going to try to salvage this you year. Know so I know. You know who I know – you, you know who they need to hire? Ben Johnson, yeah. the offensive coordinator from the Lions. I think that would be a perfect hire for we've seen what he's done with Jared Goff and that offense in Detroit. I'm saying, Derek, this would be a great hire. Who, for who, who are the two? It's two coaches that just recently said they want to coach again. I know Belichick is one of them. No, uh, I, I, keep, keep Belichick away from Caleb Williams. There's <laughs> another coach. I can't think of the name offhand, but it's two coaches. Belichick is one of them. It was just yesterday. Uh, I know that um, for next year, they were saying for 2025, uh, but you know, money talks. Well, yeah, money does talk on that sense. I know Marv was a Marvin Lewis said he wants to coach again, but I think that ship has sailed. Yeah, that ship has sailed. Marvin, you know, this, if we're being, you know, honest about it, I wouldn't mind, you know, and he's a defensive minded coach. But I think he's a type of coach, a head coach that could get through to Caleb. Why? Because he reminds me, and it's just the uh, the characteristics, the mannerisms. He reminds me of Phil Jackson. He can kind of get to you and make you a better player. And that's Tony Dungy. I think Tony Dungy, if not a head coach, just a mentor for Caleb Williams, I think you would definitely see a better player with Caleb Williams if he had Tony Dungy in his ear. Not a fiery guy, a player's guy, but a guy who can get through to Caleb Williams. That that's the one guy that I would probably point to is uh is Tony Dungy. That that's just the guy that I would get to. But nonetheless, we're gonna we got a couple more minutes left here on Sweep the League. Uh, a <laughs> couple more topics we're gonna talk about here before we go. One last topic dealing with football. Uh, is this right here. Gio, just a quick thought on this, and then we'll go to the our last segment here. But a quick thought. Yesterday, I mentioned a trade. Now, we all know Bryce Young has basically said, you know, he he wouldn't mind a trade, you know, go to another team, yada, yada. The per- the, where I said the perfect trade was this. You send Bryce Young to Jacksonville. You send Trevor Lawrence to Carolina. Now, obviously, some draft picks are going to be in there, but you see what Carolina has done with Andy Dalton. A veteran quarterback with a team that's not, you know, super young. It's got some veterans on there. You see what Dalton does. So you give them a better quarterback than Bryce Young. But with Bryce Young going to Jacksonville, a young team, ETN, Brian Thomas, they're they're in a rebuild. I think it makes a whole lot of sense for them to make that deal. Thoughts on that real quick. Ah. Uh. I think there's still talent. Trevor Lawrence obviously hasn't played well. And Dougie P, uh, he didn't construct his team. S- something's off. Right? They they, they look mm-hmm. terrible against the Bills. I mean, it, it was an annihilation. But I think Trevor Lawrence is still a good player. They got to fix the offensive line to me. Has mm-hmm. not been good while he's been there. They're leaky. They're inconsistent. They can't really run block either, if you really notice, at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. So they made the playoffs that one year. I was very surprised. Uh, but no, Rudy, I'm keeping Trevor Lawrence. You just paid him, Rudy. Now, if you're the Panthers, sure, I would probably do it. But if you're the Jags, it's too early. We saw, what was it? That's too long ago. Denver get beat by what? 70 points? I mean, yeah. <laughs> you get bad games a lot in this league. Yeah, the Jags have had a stretch, but I think the Jags will be okay. Uh, but their but defense Trevor's is Trevor's not it. happy with Peterson. That's the key. I Are you going to get rid of Peterson? Do we know that Peterson? for sure, though? I mean, just look at, look at his sideline attitude this past weekend in Buffalo. I mean, have you ever seen Trevor Lawrence walk away being pissed off just – not having anything to do with Doug Peterson. I mean, I've I've never seen him act like that. Not even in college. Mm, I I still respect Doug P a lot. I, I think they can get things moving, but they guys just 
Start by just running the ball consistently. Hey, hey, really. the quarterback. Hey, Gio, is Bryce even an NFL quarterback? Is Bryce going to – what do you – I mean, he's a small he – he's, he's Doug Flutie's size. I mean, it, is he even a guy that's going to end up being a starting quarterback two years from now? I mm. think he still can be. Maybe. You do? I, I, I think, Derek, I just think the organization has been a mess in Carolina. They've had coaches in and out the door, players. It just hasn't been good, and right now you've seen it. Now, look, Andy Dalton's a veteran, right? Is Andy Dalton going to do this every game? Highly unlikely. Highly unlikely. Why? Carolina's probably going to win this weekend. Dalton on the revenge tour against Cincinnati. Well, he would love to put them at 0 and 4. Really, My so AFC you, pick is not looking very good right know, now. So, yeah. so, so, you know Cincinnati must win that game. We talk Wait, about you know, that I told Rudy, Rudy though, though, could Taylor be on the hot seat if they miss the playoffs? And we talked about this. He's on the hot the season. seat now. Forget the playoffs, man. He, got, he needs to get a win. He needs to get a win. The defense looked slow. Now, Grant, the Jalen Daniels is a talent, and he has been – as advertised, as I thought he he would be, I, I thought he was coming out. He could run, right? Caleb is not a runner. This guy can run with a purpose. Caleb is just running for his life because of the offensive line so bad. But mm-hmm. uh, I, I think there's something there. You just gotta give him a better team, give him a better system. Not Pittsburgh because they don't develop quarterbacks there, but. They're still three and zero. Are you guys? I got. I don't know how that. That's kind of mind boggling. Pittsburgh. (laughs) um, Why? Why is there? Now tell me this: the Steelers three and zero. I understand that. But is it, is it a convincing three and zero? Because no, um, no. what's his name? Fields is averaging like what one hundred and seventy three yards, I think, passing a game, and he's got two uh, passing touchdowns and one running touchdown in three games. Is he the answer or? Are they just waiting? It seems like Tomlin hasn't committed to him, not publicly. So is he just waiting on Russ to get back healthy? And then he inserts Russ back into the starting lineup? I don't, that's a good I don't question. Know what to expect there? I mean, if if you're looking at it, if you're winning, why change anything? I mean, you're 3-0, and even though you haven't really looked great. Why would you change anything if you're three and zero? So I say no. I, I say, man, I, I say you just stick with Justin. You Fields. know, three and zero can easily turn into three and three when you're not really getting the offensive production. They've been yeah. kind of fortunate. The defense has stepped up, but it's not like uh, he's been killing them, man. Three, two passing touchdowns in three games. Uh, yeah. Justin Field, he's managing the game. But don't you think they want to go up and down the field, have a little few, a few more options with Russell, uh, with Russ, and then if it doesn't work, then you go back to uh, Justin Fields. So that's why I asked you guys because I'm, I'm just trying to figure out because if you sit Justin down and bring Russ in, can you go back to Justin Fields if it doesn't work well, out with Russ? Well, here's the question. I guess the best question to pose: Are you rocking with Russell Wilson for the next couple of years? Or is Justin that guy? If Justin's that guy, then Russ needs to take a back seat. And you so just bring Russ in, in, though. I mean, that's what I'm saying. Denver yeah. debacle. I mean, I, and he really he didn't play that bad in Denver. He actually had a good. If you look at the numbers, Derek, he the man had actually good. pretty good yeah, here, Rudy, with yeah, a bunch yeah. of dinks and dunks. But I only asked. But well, so why? Is, I'm just saying because Mike Tom usually. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's good for your psyche when a, a guy knows, especially a young quarterback, that you're his guy. Why hasn't Mike Tomlin, uh, he's still on the fence. He hasn't come out and just said, Justin's our guy. So uh, that tells me that he's still uh, not very confident in Justin Fields. Uh, they've been fortunate to be 3-0, and zero, but I'm just figuring out if he goes to Russ, can, will you, how would that affect Justin Fields' confidence? I don't know. I mean, honestly, it shouldn't affect him too, too much. I mean, I'm sorry, it will affect him a lot. You're you're talking like, well, I'm three and zero with the team, and you want to bench me for Russ Wilson, who hasn't played. Um, well, man, it, that would is he hurt for real? Because when I see him on the sidelines, it's kind of a weird, hurt. weird feeling. He's out there holding a clipboard. He's chewing his gum. I, it's weird to me. I don't know. 
I think Russ is going on. He doesn't look disgruntled, Gio. That's why I said that I think um, that he was really hurt. He's not over there pouting like he's been benched. He's, <laughs> he's looking confident like he believes that he's going to really get an opportunity to play. I've been looking at his body language, and he doesn't look like a guy that's go, that feels he's going to be carrying the clipboard for the rest of the year. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. we got one more segment here. And, Gio, it's a new segment that we uh, launched recently. It's called the Cutoff Guard segment. Let's get to it real quick. All right, our Cutoff Guard segment today is going to be WNBA news that just came out recently. Today, Chicago Sky have fired head coach Teresa Williams. I told you. Hiring her, her... Uh, Annie uh, Stalvi. So, <laughs> are we caught off guard by this? Derek wasn't caught off guard by this. Oh, I am a little bit because, again, first year head coach, one of the uh, all time WNBA players, <laughs> there just wasn't a lot of chemistry anywhere on this team. Derek, your uh, your thoughts on the uh, Teresa Witherspoon? Uh, I- I wish her well on her next endeavor, but this is no surprise to me whatsoever. I I didn't like the way they looked as a team. And and the main reason was because she didn't reel the players in. Uh, She let Angel. I think when it really cemented it was when uh, the the game, they were losing about 25. Yeah. And she let Angel stay on the floor so she could get her double-double. Yeah, uh, that that that's not the way you bring a team together. And I think they looked at it. They sat back and looked at everything over the course of the year, and they could have done a lot more with Cardoso. I know she was injured early in the year, but the fact that they wouldn't use her more on the low post, she's their best offensive option around the basket. And we know Angel's not that gifted offensively. And yeah. I just this thing. And then you got the behavior. You have to factor in uh, Angel and Kennedy Carter. You got to fact that it that that in as well, and it's like Teresa didn't get a grip on her team, and she she's paying for it, and I think she you know sometimes it just doesn't work, and I think that they 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 want to move forward next year, um, and they, they didn't like the way the season ended, and they just they basically at the end of the year they were like the Philadelphia Eagles of last year, they just basically just folded at the end of the year, the second half of the season, and I think that's why they got rid of her. We uh, are we expecting a uh, Don Staley rumor to come out here pretty soon? I mean, we mentioned it the other day that Don is probably the the name on top of a lot of teams' list right now. So, I mean, if she was to go to Chicago and leave South Carolina, it's not a bad team to start with. Definitely not, but. I mean, we got to figure who's going to be the next coach. Now, you mentioned the Indiana Fever head coach. Is she next? We can probably get that here pretty Chris. soon. But, yeah, that's the that's our off guard, cut off guard segment for today was Teresa Witherspoon. Um, tomorrow we'll come back. We'll do our NFL picks. We'll get some NCAA picks. We'll pick the top 25 games. Of course, I know Gio's taking Duke this weekend because he's a huge Duke football fan. No, he's not. <laughs> And then I'm going to be taking North Carolina this weekend. Duke and North Carolina play the Carlisle Cup this weekend. So we're going to see how that goes. I already know it's not going to be like 70 to 50. It's not going to have no James Madison uh, magic to it. And not this weekend. But tomorrow we'll get our NFL picks in. We'll also talk to Derek about uh, Devin Vassell. That was the topic of Locked On Spurs today. So we'll uh, we'll talk a little bit about Devin Vassell and also if we have a we might have a special guest tomorrow we're we're about 90% sure confirmed on it so uh we'll see if we have a special guest if we do we might go a little bit longer so just an FYI keep up uh, with y'all's notifications be sure to go to our YouTube page search at Sweep League TV be a subscriber so that's what our Friday's going to look like just nothing but picks coming in but yeah, I'm going to say it's a, I'm going to say 99.9% and I'm going to make sure it happens cuz he gave me his word and I've been knowing him for a while, and I, I think it'll be that he's going to keep his word. I would just say the kiss of death is is what we're expecting. It will exactly. leave it at that. <laughs> uh, he's going to throw it towards Gio at the Georgia and Bama game. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, Rudy, before we get off, quick the suggestion for the Chicago Sky. What would you guys think about this name? Um, what's the lady's name? The, first, the superstar that used to play for the Houston Comets? Not Cheryl Swoops. 
Cynthia Cooper. Hey, Cynthia, where are you? That would be that wouldn't be bad, Cynthia Cooper. I want to say one thing. All right. Shout out to Kalen Clark for making first team All NBA. I thought it was. I'm a little surprised she made it over Sabrina, but I mean, well, Sabrina uh, made it as well. She made it over Alyssa was, Thomas. Yeah, yeah that's Thomas. Second team, I believe, but. Uh, Kudos to her. She also broke what the assist record for an entire season, which is crazy to think. She got to stop the turnovers, but I think that will come with time uh, because they definitely played better towards the end of they the. Did. That break she got from the Olympics was actually much needed, and uh, put up a good fight against uh, the team last night. Which I forgot who they were. Connecticut. Kelsey yeah, yeah, Mitchell didn't show yeah. up uh, like she had in the past, and then you remember that uh, she made that pass at the end of the game when she jumped up. She actually actually had a drive to the basket, and she jumped up and threw the ball almost into oh, yeah. the back court. That was the game right there. Yeah, yeah. So we'll talk more some WNBA because the playoffs are actually starting, and as we leave the show here, the uh, Giants I think are about to lose. They're down yeah, twenty to fifteen down. to the Giants to the Cowboys. Point. Ah, come on, Daniel. You should have made me look a little bit better here with a touchdown pass, but he didn't get no touchdown pass. So for Coach Geo, for Hall of Famer Derek Gurman, we'll be back tomorrow, guys. This show will be rebroadcast in the morning for y'all uh, to take a look at. But nonetheless, we appreciate y'all for joining us here on Sweep the League. Until we sweep the league again tomorrow, we'll see you there, Knuckleheads. Everybody have a good night.